this video we're looking at how to connect with a database and retrieve information from a database using the MySQL I methods. So right here you can see MySQL I which stands for MySQL improved. This is the second group of MySQL functions that they added to PHP. So what we're going to do is be working with this page and there's four different parts that we're going to use first part which I've got completed here already up here at the top has a database name, a database user, database password, database host those four pieces of information are required with the MySQLI connect method we pass those in in this order host, username, password, database name this function will attempt to connect to the database that has the database name using this username and password on this computer localhost so the computer that I'm currently on if that fails this method right here die will stop the page running and display this message on the screen and nothing else will appear on the page after this point if it does work this variable here link will contain the reference to this connection which we can then use in parts two and three. So we're going to run the desired query. I've already got a query in here. Select full name and email from users where user type equals one. So I'm going to get a list of all my client users from my users table. I save that just as a string so it's easier for me to edit and throw variables in here. This string is going to be used in my method to run the query and then down here inside the body, inside my wrapper div, part three, I'm going to loop through the record set, so my query up above to fetch all the users, I'm going to loop through that record set, writing out one row at a time. So I'm going to write out the username and the email address. Each one of them I'm going to put inside of a paragraph. So I'm going to have a series of paragraphs on the page listing those off. And the final fourth part is to close the connection to the database. I'm actually going to put that in here right now. So MySQLI close and then you can see it's asking for the MySQLI link. That's the connection which is my variable link from up above. Okay so we have the connection opening up here. We've got it closing at the bottom. I need to run my query and then loop through the record set that's generated. Okay fairly straightforward. I create a variable. I'm going to use RS to stand, which stands for record set. I call the MySQLI query method and it takes, as you can see here, a minimum of two parameters. The first one is the link itself to the connection and the second one is the SQL query we want to use and that is the variable we already have here. So strsql. There we go. This is our query. This will actually connect to the database, send over this query, and the result that comes back from the database will be put into this variable right here, this RS variable. Now, down here inside the body, step three, I check to see if that variable exists. If RS, we can also have an else and display error messages if we want. So I could have an echo the paragraph tag, echo my closing paragraph tag, and then between we can write out MySQLI error and I just have to give it the connection. That will write out for me exactly what the message is, the error message. Um, if you're used to using PHP MyAdmin to run your queries and experiment with the database, when you do something wrong, that error message that appears in red across the top of the page, that is what this MySQLI error is. It's that message, that piece of information. Alright, so let's do the, the functioning one. At this point, we're assuming we're going to get what we want out of here. And here's the two columns we've requested full name and email. Those are my two columns. So each of those is going to be a variable inside of our array. 
All right, so if rs, that means the query worked, we're going to do a while loop, kind of like a for loop. I'll space it out to make this easier to see. Inside the round brackets here, inside the parentheses for the while loop, what we do is we put in an operation that we want to attempt. If the operation works, it keeps looping. As soon as it fails, it stops looping, which is perfect for us because what we want to do is we want to read one row at a time out of the record set. The record set, you've seen it on the PHP My Admin pages, it's just like a table of data, and we read one row at a time. We do this with the MySQLI fetch a source. It's going to be asking for our record set. There we go, like that. MySQLI fetch a source will read one row from the table, and it will convert that one row into an associative array. So now I have a variable called row, which is an associative array, and inside that there will be a column called full name, and there is also a column in here called email. Full name and email, those were the two things that we asked for up at the top here. Full name and email. Down here, full name and email. And these are case sensitive, so they have to be spelled exactly the same way as here. If I used some other alias, say for example I came in here and I said as fn, that's going to change my column name down here to fn. Again, case sensitive. So I have those values. I'm just going to comment those out for the moment. Now I'm going to write a paragraph tag and put both of these values inside there. So echo p, and then I will concatenate row fn, and then a space in between them, and then row email. There we go. Now I can be using up uh, single or double quotation marks here. It's not going to make much of a difference. Save that, and I'm done. I will now be able to loop through my record set, writing out one paragraph for each row in the table, and every paragraph is going to have the full name and the email with a space in between them. All right, so let's take a look at the page. There we go. Here's the page, and if I refresh this to load it, there we go. So, full name followed by email with a space in between. Full name, full name, full name, followed by emails. That's all the data from my table. So, just to recap, back in here, step one connect to the database. You have to provide the host, the username, password, database name, or die. Usually if you can't connect to the database, there's nothing on the page that you really need to do, so we kill the page at that point. Step two, write out your query and pass it through the MySQLI query method. You will get back a record set, which you can then use down inside the page. If the record set is valid, we'll run this part of the code where we loop, and the associative array is generated one row at a time put into this variable which becomes an associative array and we use our column names to write out the data. If it fails, if my if the record set fails, we can write out the MySQLI error messages. Fourth and final step, make sure that you always close the connection. That's going to help out with database performance.